The Mediterranean sun beats down on the North African coast. Here, amidst the sprawling city of Tunis, lie the remnants of a once mighty civilization. Carthage, a name that echoes through history, whispers of ambition, conflict, and ultimate destruction. Its ruins stand as a silent testament to a power that rivaled Rome itself. These stones, scattered and worn by time, hold the secrets of a civilization that shaped the ancient world. We journey back in time to an era of seafaring empires and epic struggles for dominance. Join us as we explore the rise and fall of Carthage, a story etched in the very landscape of modern Tunisia. Our journey begins in the 9th century BC. Phoenician traders established a small colony on the North African coast. This settlement, known as Carthage, was strategically located. It commanded access to vital trade routes in the Mediterranean. Carthage rose to become a major power, challenging Rome. Its story is a testament to Phoenician ambition and resilience. Carthage's prosperity was built on trade. The rise of Carthage brought it into conflict with other powers. These conflicts became known as the Punic Wars. They pitted two of the greatest powers of the time against each other. Join us as we explore the epic struggles that defined the fate of Carthage. Carthage's story begins in Phoenicia, modern-day Lebanon. Renowned seafarers, the Phoenicians established trading posts across the Mediterranean. One outpost, founded around 814 BC, became Carthage. It surpassed its parent cities in wealth and power. The Phoenicians planted the seeds of a future empire. Carthage inherited a rich maritime tradition. They built a powerful fleet, connecting Carthage to a vast network of commerce. Their ships carried goods to distant shores, laying the foundation for a cosmopolitan empire. Carthage's strategic location on the North African coast gave it a distinct advantage. The city's harbors bustled with activity, becoming a vibrant hub of commerce and exchange. The Phoenician influence extended beyond maritime trade, shaping Carthage's cultural identity. Carthage's economic power was the engine of its rise to prominence. Its vast trading network brought immense wealth to the city, fueling its expansion and military might. Carthaginian merchants traded in a wide range of goods, from precious metals and ivory to textiles, spices, and agricultural products. Their ships sailed as far as the British Isles in search of tin and other valuable resources. This extensive trade network made Carthage one of the richest cities in the ancient world. The Carthaginian economy was not solely reliant on trade. The city also controlled vast agricultural lands in North Africa, producing grain, olives, and other crops. These fertile lands provided food for the city's growing population and generated significant revenue. Carthage's economic diversity, combining maritime trade with agricultural production, ensured its prosperity and resilience. This balance of trade and agriculture provided a stable foundation for growth and expansion. Carthage's commercial success was underpinned by a sophisticated system of governance and administration. The city was ruled by a council of elders, known as the Sufates, who were elected from the city's elite families. This oligarchic system ensured stability and continuity, allowing Carthage to pursue its commercial interests effectively. The Sufates, experienced in trade and diplomacy, guided the city's expansion and managed its complex affairs. The Carthaginian navy played a crucial role in protecting the city's trade routes and projecting its power across the Mediterranean. Their warships, equipped with rams and manned by skilled sailors, were a formidable force. The Carthaginian navy controlled the seas, ensuring the safe passage of their merchant ships and deterring potential rivals. This naval dominance was essential to Carthage's economic and political power, safeguarding its trade routes and projecting its influence across the Mediterranean. Carthage was a vibrant metropolis, a hub of innovation and cultural exchange. The city boasted impressive infrastructure, including paved streets and public baths. Its architecture reflected Phoenician, Egyptian and Greek styles. Carthage was a city of learning, attracting scholars from across the Mediterranean. This vibrant cultural landscape fostered creativity and intellectual growth. The Carthaginians were renowned for their metalworking skills. They excelled in textile production, creating luxurious fabrics. Carthaginian craftsmen produced exquisite objects, reflecting the city's wealth. 
Carthage's religious life blended Phoenician traditions with local influences. The city's most important deity was Baal Hammon, the god of the sky and fertility. Religious festivals reinforced community bonds and cultural identity. As Carthage grew, it expanded its territorial control. This expansion brought Carthage into conflict with other Mediterranean powers. The stage was set for a clash of titans, determining the fate of the Mediterranean world. The Mediterranean, a cradle of civilizations, was also a breeding ground for rivalries. By the third century BC, Carthage and Rome were on a collision course. Their ambitions clashed in Sicily, a fertile island strategically located in the heart of the Mediterranean. Both powers coveted its resources and strategic importance. The struggle for control of Sicily would ignite the first of three epic wars. The seeds of conflict sown in Sicilian ambition were about to sprout into a devastating war. Carthage viewed Sicily as an extension of its North African domain. Its control over key ports ensured a steady flow of resources. Rome saw Sicily as a stepping stone towards Mediterranean dominance. The clash of these two titans was inevitable. The First Punic War, from 264 to 241 BC, was the first major clash between Carthage and Rome. It was a war of unprecedented scale and intensity fought on land and sea. The First Punic War would determine which power would dominate the Mediterranean. Carthage dominated the sea with its experienced navy. Their skilled sailors controlled the Mediterranean, disrupting Roman supply lines. Rome, a land power, lacked naval expertise. They quickly built a strong navy. Their determination to challenge Carthage was crucial. They adapted captured Carthaginian ships. The Corvus allowed them to board enemy vessels. The Battle of Mylae marked a turning point. Rome's victory shattered Carthage's invincibility. The balance of power in the Mediterranean shifted. The war saw dramatic shifts in fortune. Carthaginian naval dominance gave way to Roman ascendancy. On land, battles raged across Sicily. The war became a brutal and costly stalemate, immense suffering and loss of life on both sides, a war of attrition pushing both empires to their limits. Romans struggled to gain a decisive advantage on land. Hamilcar Barca's guerrilla tactics frustrated Roman attempts. His leadership prolonged the war. The financial strain on both sides became immense. The cost of maintaining large armies and navies was heavy. Romans poured resources into building new ships. Their persistence to control the Mediterranean proved decisive. The Battle of the Egates Islands in 241 BC sealed Carthage's fate. The Roman fleet, commanded by Gaius Lutatius Catulus, decisively defeated the Carthaginians. This marked the end of Carthaginian naval dominance. Carthage had to cede Sicily, pay indemnity and relinquish territories. Military restrictions were imposed, limiting Carthage's power. Rome emerged as the dominant power in the Western Mediterranean. Resentment in Carthage sowed seeds of future conflict. The war marked a turning point in naval warfare. The First Punic War left an enduring legacy on the ancient world. The First Punic War ended in defeat for Carthage, fueling resentment and a desire for revenge. Hamilcar Barca emerged as a leading figure, nurturing hatred for Rome in his sons, especially Hannibal. Hamilcar expanded in Iberia, building a power base rich in resources and manpower. His vision laid the groundwork for Hannibal's future campaigns against Rome. Hannibal swore an oath of eternal enmity towards Rome, shaping his destiny. In 221 BC, Hannibal launched his audacious plan, marching his army, including war elephants, to invade Italy. Hannibal's bold strategy stunned the Romans, catching them completely off guard. Hannibal crosses the Alps. In 218 BC, Hannibal's crossing of the Alps was a celebrated military feat. The Alps presented a formidable challenge with their treacherous passes and hostile tribes. Hannibal's diverse army, including war elephants, faced incredible hardships. The 15-day crossing tested human endurance and logistics. The Alps became a testament to Hannibal's leadership and resilience. Harsh conditions took a heavy toll on his forces. Many soldiers perished from cold, hunger and disease. The war elephants also suffered heavy losses. Despite setbacks, Hannibal's determination never wavered. He inspired his troops with courage and belief in their mission. Hannibal's leadership became legendary.
triumphs on Italian soil. Hannibal's initial victories on Italian soil sent shockwaves through the Roman Republic. At the Battle of Trebia in 218 BC, he lured the Roman army into an ambush, inflicting a crushing defeat. This victory demonstrated Hannibal's tactical brilliance and his ability to exploit the terrain to his advantage. It also shattered Roman confidence and signaled the beginning of a series of humiliating defeats. The Battle of Trebia, a tactical masterpiece, established Hannibal's reputation as a military genius. Hannibal's next major victory came at Lake Trasimene in 217 BC. He ambushed a Roman army led by the consul Gaius Flaminius, trapping them between the lake and the surrounding hills. The resulting battle was a massacre with thousands of Roman soldiers killed or captured. This devastating defeat further demoralized the Romans and demonstrated Hannibal's mastery of ambush tactics. The Battle of Lake Trasimene, a stunning victory for Hannibal, deepened Roman anxieties about his military prowess. Hannibal's most famous victory and arguably one of the greatest tactical achievements in military history was the Battle of Cannae in 216 BC. He employed a brilliant double envelopment maneuver, trapping a massive Roman army and annihilating it. The Battle of Cannae was a catastrophic defeat for Rome, resulting in the deaths of tens of thousands of soldiers, including several senators and consuls. The scale of the defeat sent shockwaves throughout the Roman Republic, threatening its very existence. Following his victory at Cannae, Hannibal gained control of much of southern Italy. Several Italian cities, disillusioned with Roman rule, defected to Hannibal's side. Hannibal's victories and the defection of Italian allies put immense pressure on Rome. The Republic faced its greatest crisis since its founding. Hannibal's presence on Italian soil, a constant threat, tested the resilience and the resolve of the Roman people. A turning of the tide. Despite his victories, Hannibal couldn't deliver a knockout blow to Rome. Rome, despite heavy losses, remained defiant. The Romans adopted a Fabian strategy, avoiding direct confrontation and harassing Hannibal's supply lines. This strategy eroded Hannibal's strength and limited his maneuverability. Under Quintus Fabius Maximus, the tide began to turn against Hannibal. Rome's strategic patience paid off, gradually weakening Hannibal's army. Scipio Africanus, Rome's answer to Hannibal. While Hannibal remained a formidable presence in Italy, a new Roman general was rising to prominence, Publius Cornelius Scipio, later known as Scipio Africanus. Scipio proposed a bold plan to invade Carthage, forcing Hannibal to return to defend his city. His strategy, mirroring Hannibal's invasion of Italy, gained the Senate's support. Scipio's vision and belief in his plan changed the course of the war. Scipio's campaign in Africa was a resounding success. Hannibal's recall from Italy marked a turning point in the Second Punic War. The stage was set for a final showdown, determining the fate of both empires. The Battle of Zama, the final showdown. The Battle of Zama, fought in 202 BC near the city of Zama Regia in modern-day Tunisia, was the final and decisive battle of the Second Punic War. It was a clash of titans, pitting two of the greatest military commanders of antiquity against each other, Hannibal Barca and Scipio Africanus. The fate of Carthage and the future of the Mediterranean hung in the balance. The Battle of Zama, a clash of civilizations, would determine the course of history. Hannibal, despite being forced to abandon his campaign in Italy, remained a formidable adversary. He assembled a large army, including war elephants and veteran troops who had fought alongside him in Italy. He hoped to use his experience and tactical brilliance to defeat Scipio and secure Carthage's survival. Hannibal, the veteran of countless battles, was determined to defend his homeland against the Roman invaders. His reputation as a military genius preceded him, casting a long shadow over the battlefield. Scipio, however, had carefully prepared for the confrontation with Hannibal. He had studied Hannibal's tactics and developed a strategy to counter his strengths. He deployed his legions in a formation designed to neutralize the threat of Hannibal's war elephants, and he skillfully used his cavalry to outflank the Carthaginian forces. Scipio's tactical brilliance, combined with the discipline and training of his Roman legions, proved decisive. The Battle of Zama was a fierce and bloody affair. Both sides fought with courage and determination, 
but Scipio's superior tactics and the discipline of his Roman legions ultimately carried the day. Hannibal's war elephants, once a source of terror for the Romans, were effectively neutralized by Scipio's clever deployments. The Carthaginian army, outmaneuvered and outfought, was routed. The Battle of Zama, a resounding victory for Rome, marked the end of Hannibal's dream of conquering Rome and sealed the fate of Carthage. The fall of Carthage, a city raised. The defeat at Zama marked the end of Carthage's resistance. The city, once a mighty empire, was forced to accept humiliating peace terms. Carthage was stripped of its territories, its navy disbanded, and it paid a heavy indemnity to Rome. The once proud city was reduced to a shadow of its former self, its power and prestige shattered. The peace treaty ensured Carthage would never again threaten Rome. The fall of Carthage marked the beginning of Roman hegemony in the Mediterranean, the echoes of Carthage. The story of Carthage is a tragedy of epic proportions. A flourishing civilization, a maritime power that once rivaled Rome, was ultimately reduced to rubble. Its ruins, scattered along the Tunisian coast, serve as a poignant reminder of the impermanence of power and the destructive nature of conflict. The echoes of Carthage's vibrant past resonate through the ages, a testament to the enduring impact of human ambition, resilience, and ultimately destruction. Thank you for watching. If like this kind of content, support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing.